right? Uh-huh. If, like, if you hear the camera, you take another pose. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very helpful. That's, that's fine. Yeah, no, it's good. Good. Not too that's good. good. I came out uh, at about the age of, uh, it wasn't until I was about 60. I was 40 years old when I came out. I actually knew that I was a lesbian from the age of five, but at the age of 16, I decided no more girl clothes. <laughs> so I guess you can say I really came out at 16 at least 25 years ago when I realized that I was gay and could come out. Uh, and I still had that stigma that it was wrong. 16, 15 years old, I kind of realized that there was something different about me. I feel like I was hiding my true self before I came out. One night with a gorgeous fellow changed my life forever. I didn't publicly announce I'm gay until I ran for Congress in 1996, and then everybody knew. It made the news everywhere, even the New York Times. I was never in the closet, so I never had to come out. You knew, I knew, whoever knew, knew. I faced more problems being a black woman than I did as a lesbian. Once I came out, it was no going back. And uh, especially being lesbian and black and in a church, you know, it was difficult, but I stood my ground and I refused to let people intimidate me. I came out twice. I came out as a gay man and then I came out as Pearl. Our generation is not something that came out like kids do today. We did not use the word queer at the time or gay. I was uncertain about what was going on, but I knew that I had this attraction to the same sex. I had two older brothers, which I love very much now. Uh, back then I had a hard time with them and uh, they, you know, they used words like queer and sissy and things like that. In those days, I was called a tomboy because, you know, I always played with the boys. You know, it was like my crew. <laughs> In the town of Raleigh, we really didn't have a lot of gay people. Uh, and when I was coming out, it was, you know, very secretive. You could just have to sneak in the doors of a bar. Uh, I think the gay bar was one block from my grandmother's house, so I could walk <laughs> to the bar and not get caught. You still hide it, especially from uh, family, because you, you're afraid you're going to be totally rejected. And that's a very painful thought. If you were younger in our generation and you came out to your family, usually it was disastrous. My mother used to say, if one of my children become a dyke, a bull dyke is what they called them back in that day, I'll kill them. She took me to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist was like, well, what do you think is wrong? And she said, well, she's just not normal. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, okay, I am normal. In the 50s, coming out was not even an option necessarily, you know. It was still a crime to be a homosexual, obviously. You had the determination that homosexuality was a disease, the lavender scare, which kept a lot of people from working, the raids that went on. Just because someone would decide, okay, it's time to go raid this place. So there was a part of me that wanted to be a traditional gal. I thought that was my right path. I remember early on thinking I would never go into a gay bar was most painful was how I reacted to other homosexuals, other people, non-heterosexuals, 
I was very mean, but because if I joined the other side of the team, then I'm safe. I went into the Navy with the idea of, as a career man, and here I was, a gay man, 19 years old, and my job was to uh, give people who were gay discharges, undesirable discharges, because they weren't fit for service. Uh, I had a friend that committed suicide because he was gay and he felt back when we were growing up, you had to marry, be married, or you were gay if that title was put to you. I thought if I got married and got, had a baby, I would be okay. Then I wouldn't have to tell my mother that I like girls. I wouldn't have to tell anyone that I like girls. I would be the norm. At that point, my mother was of course, mortified. And she just decided that the best thing to do to cure, so-called cure, was to get married. So I got married at 14 years of age. I met my partner, Michael, uh, in 68, 1968. Earl came into the house and I looked at him. He had on a white dress shirt at summertime and brown khaki pants. And at that time, when I looked at him, I thought, you are a knockout. And so I told God, if you let me have him, I'll never want anybody else. It didn't take long. It was like three or four weeks before we started making plans to move in together. In high school, I realized that I really liked another classmate. He was not gay. I didn't find there was very much difference between loving a man and loving a woman. In general, love is love. We met at Sage. Um, she started flirting with me. <laughs> I called him and said, when a lady invites you out, you don't refuse them. Hmm. So I went, <laughs> and she's been with me ever since, because she was crazy about We've me. We've been together ever since. Okay, we've been together. We're married, yes. Yes, we, 2008. 2008, when they allowed us. Right after. Allowed we, us. All of our family was around. Mm -hmm. I, I got down on one knee mm -hmm. and asked her to marry me. All of our friends, everybody has accepted us as a couple, uh, a nice looking couple, I might add. <laughs> uh, but it was 44 wonderful years. When Michael died, I was 60. And uh, Michael was diagnosed with AIDS in 88 and he died four years later. My entire life changed at that point. Hold it. Hold it. I started going out to Fire Island by myself, and I started doing a little campy drag, but I always took it off before I went back in the city. You know, it was almost like you were in a secret society somewhere. The gay bars were named after birds, and so you would know the bird name. That was, a, that was a bar you could go to. I felt so free out on Fire Island. It was, it was a gay community. The best thing about finally coming out of the closet was being honest with myself, with the world, I had a more relaxed life because, okay, nobody shot me and, and I didn't get beat up. This one day, I couldn't get it together to get off the island. It was like I couldn't take off that dress. And when I walked across the stage and got my high school diploma, 
I went to the bathroom and I came back and the dress was gone and the suit was on. I said, this is me. 1970, there was the very first march. Everything was okay till we got uptown to St. Patrick's Cathedral. They poured out of the church. They threw garbage at us. They called us all kinds of names. We left the village with 200 people. And by the time we got to the sheep meadow, it was about 50 of us. But we locked arms and we kept going. We stood on many a street corner demonstrating. Yeah. We were out in the street a lot. I remember having my baby, Joanna, strapped to my chest. We were arrested in Washington. I mean, we were activists. So by 1975, people had come from the whole tri-state area. By 1980, people were coming from all around the country. Well, I was the first openly gay candidate for a federal office nationwide. I got notes from mothers, thank you for doing this. Uh, I got notes from young people. One of them said, thank you for running, for being open. My father knows you and he likes you very much. And you've made my life so much easier. An important note. It always makes me emotional here, but someone has to be first. Things have become more accepting. However, I think part of the problem for other seniors is because of all the discrimination they felt earlier, they're still not coming out. It's been interesting, you know, seeing what all these young people nowadays that are out and how they hold hands and, you know, live together, marry together and stuff like that. And that was something we never dreamed of. I was always looking for that partner in someone else. Never found him, never found him. I've never had a lover, I've never had a partner. I've observed that happening to lots of uh, gay people in their lives when they give up. Younger people need to know the struggles that were fought so that they could have the freedoms they have. Just be yourself and accept yourself and Hopefully, the people that count will love you regardless. Be true to yourself and don't let anybody uh, dissuade you from your dream. You know who you are and don't let nobody turn you around. I would recommend saying 10 times a day, this is me and it's okay. And I really like me. I think I lost a lot of years not being myself. Yeah. Let's not lose another second. It's, uh, it's true. time is of the essence. You're, you're only here once. For the rest of my life, if nothing else happens, wow, this is me.